Hey folks, hopefully an interesting video for you today. Here I have my new HTC Vive XR Elite and one of the features that HTC have included with this headset is wireless 6E. And that's something I really want to test out today when it comes to PC VR streaming so that we can effectively play our Steam library of VR games wirelessly to our headset. Now it is actually possible to do this with Wi-Fi 5 if you don't have Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E, but for the best possible results, the connection you want is your computer that you are going to be streaming from connected directly to your router via a LAN cable. The router being Wi-Fi 6E enabled and then connecting via Wi-Fi 6E from your headset to that network. However, the setup I'm going for today is completely wireless. So I have my headset, I have my laptop. This cable here is just the power cable for my laptop because the battery is going to die on us otherwise. And what we're gonna do is I've connected the laptop to Wi-Fi 6E. And in order to do this, I did have to upgrade my laptop with a Wi-Fi 6E card, which was not expensive, but it did require a little bit of PC surgery in order to get that set up. Oh, and I am running Windows 11 because sadly, Microsoft do not allow Wi-Fi 6E through Windows 10. Yep, we can see that we are connected to my 6G network, which is the six gigahertz network. And even though it only says that's Wi-Fi 6, it is Wi-Fi 6E. As you can see on the network band, we are connected to the six gigahertz network, which is solely dedicated for Wi-Fi 6E devices. And if we just do a speed test here, which will only test the speed of the internet rather than the network connection, but it will give us a bit of an idea as to what we are working with. I have a one gigabit internet connection. So a thousand megabytes is the, or megabits, sorry, is the theoretical maximum we are going to see. But I'll tell you what, that is probably the fastest Wi-Fi connection that I am ever going to get, okay? 844 megabits. So yeah, that's pretty good. So the Wi-Fi 6E is definitely working. Okay, I have the Vive Streaming Hub software installed here and ready to go. And I will just briefly run over my settings for this. The bit rate, I've set it to 60 Mbps, although I have also enabled dynamic bit rate, so I'm not sure if setting the bit rate here makes any difference. I personally find that TCP mode is more effective when it comes to PC VR streaming from this app. So I always have this enabled as well. Okay, but you may want to test for the best results yourself there. And pretty much everything else I have just left at the default setting. So let's go ahead, shall we? Put on the headset and see what sort of results we get here with a purely wireless PC VR experience. Okay, so I just want to clarify as well, this isn't my normal play space. There's obviously not a lot of room here, but for the purposes of recording this video, I want to keep everything in shot. So yeah, um, you do need more space to play VR properly than what I'm using here, but it will serve our purposes. So let's now just head down to settings and make sure that we are connected correctly with the headset. So yep, I'm connected to my main network here, which allows the six gigahertz band. It should select the 6C automatically. And if we head to computer connection, I can see my Vive Hub laptop there. So we just need to go ahead and select that. Since I've not done this before, we'll have to go for the first time setup, which involves using the code here. So we'll point the camera there. And yeah, we should be good to go now. We have our connection. Hopefully this will work. I just hope my laptop's also capable of playing some of these games. Let's start with something that isn't too demanding. I've got three VR games installed on the laptop. Let's begin with a bit of Beat Saber, one of the classics. Not very demanding in terms of the graphical capabilities that are required, but it is demanding in terms of the connection because you need to be quite accurate with your uh, Beat Saber cuts. So hopefully this is gonna work. A little tip for you guys, if ever you do have issues with Steam VR through PC VR, then you can actually disable the Steam VR dashboard and that should give you a slightly better connection. I am not a Beat Saber expert, but I don't think that's the uh, point here. Let's just go ahead and see what sort of connection we've got. But so far, I'm really impressed. I've had no latency issues. Or I'm having no latency issues at the moment. And yeah, it's as if I'm playing 
native to the headset, which of course I'm not. This is absolutely fine. I am a little bit aware of my limited play space here, which is why there's not much movement going on with me. This is a perfect connection. So far, so good. For my normal PC VR setup, I use my main computer, which is connected via LAN cable. But I know that's not practical for everybody, which is why I really wanted to do this particular test. And so far, this is seamless. So a very good start. I know we've only been doing it for a minute or so. So it's hardly a uh, productive sample of testing just yet. But we've got some other games to get through. And let's just see if we can get through this entire song first. I haven't even had so much as a missed frame to my eyes. Not even so much as a stutter. Okay, that was the first issue I had. I don't think it would have come through on the recording. Maybe it would have, I'm not sure. A little bit of stutter on the sound. Very briefly, it might have been that the volume was too high. Let me just lower that a touch. Okay, but honestly, guys, that was seamless, apart from that little bit of sound stutter. Right, let's move on to another game, shall we? Okay, I've never played Vacation Simulator myself. It's a game that the kids love. Okay, well, that seems very good. Uh, at first, when this scene opened, it looked a little bit blurry, a little bit pixelated, but that very quickly was rectified. And, yeah, again, it looks just as if I am playing natively a game on the headset here. Okay, let's uh, let's make a quick start, shall we? Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to really be able to do too much here because of my limited play space. But again, it should give us a bit of an idea as to whether this is actually working. This looks awesome. I honestly did not expect this kind of smoothness, I guess and latency-free PC VR gaming using a completely wireless setup here. Wireless headset, wireless laptop. But honestly, guys, I'm not having any issues here whatsoever. So if you're not able to connect a computer via LAN cable, then it doesn't seem like you need to because that's not the setup I've got going right now either. Yeah, one of the symptoms that your PC VR wireless experience isn't working as perhaps it should is that hand tracking is usually the first symptom of that when it just sort of starts to mess up and isn't as smooth as perhaps it is natively but honestly I'm just not having any issues there it, it's just running very very smoothly uh, right let's start yeah heading out here shall we okay guys well I'll tell you what the second experience here I am also very very happy with no latency, perfect hand tracking, well, controller tracking, you know what I mean. Okay, right, let's go ahead and leave a Vacation Simulator then for the time being. Let's exit game. Right, and back from the home screen, let's go for the ultimate test, shall we? Half-Life Alex, the 70 gigabyte monster. These games are like two to three gigabytes each to install. This is just under 70 gigabytes. Uh, as I say, I don't even know if my laptop, which is a few years old at this point, is even going to be able to handle this experience. Just make sure that if you are doing exactly what I am doing, that you do have Wi-Fi 6E in a computer or laptop if you are not going to be using a LAN cable. And again, that will mean using Windows 11 for better or worse. Uh, this is the first time opening Half-Life Alex on this laptop, and I don't seem to be getting much fun here. So let's just see what's going on. Oh, it is. It's just loading for the first time quite slowly. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Oh, I had just a little bit of jitter there. But I, again, I'm not sure if that's an, uh, you know, an issue with the laptop or with the PC VR. It didn't feel like it was, um, you know, network latency. So it might have just been loading the game still at that point. Uh, let's go ahead and select continue. I haven't actually played the game for a while, so I'm not sure exactly where I left off previously. Yeah, it looks like the laptop itself is just struggling to get things loaded there. Uh, but we might be making progress, hopefully. 
I've got a black screen on my laptop. Let's see what we've got in VR. Fresh trigger to start. Okay. Right. No, we're in. A little bit jittery there at the get-go, but again, I think that's down to the laptop rather than the actual PC VR streaming experience itself. And I tell you what, I forget how gorgeous this game is. If you've never experienced Half-Life Alex, folks, in my recommendation, it is like the quintessential VR gaming title, even to this day. It really is. And yeah, once again, seamless controller tracking, which is always an encouraging start. Uh, can we go through this door? Nope, doesn't look like it. What's going on over there? Oh, I don't think I want to find out. <laughs> Let's uh, go back up the stairs, shall we? We'll keep that for later. Oh, another one over there. I can't even remember what they do, actually. It's been so long since I've played, but we'll take it. Oh, this game, it's, it's really good. It really is. And yeah, I'm just, you know, turning it, turning my character and it's responding beautifully along with the teleport as well. Can I head up there? Nope. I think that's where I came from if I remember correctly. So one of these doors must lead somewhere. Not that one. Um, what have we got up there? Oh, that's where I think some items were looted from. Okay, it must be down here then. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is uh, perfect. Okay, maybe not, you know, my gaming skills, but the actual PC VR itself is working wonderfully. So I've been going now for about 35 minutes across all three games and I've not had any issues whatsoever. I think, oh, I had one minor sound issue, didn't I, on Beat Saber? But that might be because I had the volume too loud and it just caused a bit of a crackle. Uh, okay, apparently we can't go through there. And the whole thing just died. <laughs> okay. Um, that wasn't actually a problem with the connection. My laptop, I think, has overheated because the laptop itself has now shut down. Yep, it's just shut itself down completely. So it was overheating. But the actual PC VR experience was perfect. So let me just go ahead and untangle myself now. And yes, I know, you probably get to see me with red face at this point. Brilliant. Seamless experience. Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. I'm getting old, so my eyes might not be up to the standards of yours, but I couldn't tell the difference between wireless PC VR streaming here with no cables whatsoever compared to native experiences directly on the XR Elite. So I do feel that Wi-Fi 6E has made a fundamental difference to the process of Wi-Fi, oh, sorry, of PC VR streaming. As I said, networking, it's a finicky experience, so don't be too disheartened. If you put your headset on, connect to your network, and don't have the same results that I just experienced, you may just need to do a little bit of tinkering with some settings in order to get things right and perfect for you. Let's be honest, that's just the nature of networking. So just to confirm, I was using a Wi-Fi 6C card in this laptop with Windows 11 and a Wi-Fi 6E router combined with the XR Elite gave me perfect results. So I hope this video helps, guys. I'm very happy with this. A little bit disappointed that my laptop's hardware itself can't handle the stress of Half-Life Alex, but that is what it is. That's just on me for going for a Dell laptop. But thank you so much for watching, folks. If the video helps, please do consider dropping a like and subscribe to the channel. I will leave a link to the laptop Wi-Fi 6E card that I have installed here. Again, it's not very expensive. I'll leave that link down in the description. I will also leave a link to the XR Elite on Amazon if you want to check that out for yourself. But thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.